All right, hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to the Shoe Snob Podcast. Uh, I guess technically episode three since the first one was an intro. Thank you for all of those that sat and listened to me talk for 22 minutes on the last episode. I hope you enjoyed my ideas on what is a handmade shoe. And so, yeah, I appreciate it. And I'm hoping this this grows because, you know, it's very important in my opinion to grow the industry through educating everybody within the industry, whether it's brands, consumers, designers, the sources, everybody. <clears throat> so that we're all on the same page, understanding and what I feel are simple ideas. So anyway, I'm rambling. Thank you for tuning in. Here we go with the subject that I feel many of you want to hear. It's a often controversial topic in the shoe industry uh, for those that really care about these things. And that is the idea of Goodyear welted versus hand welted. So let's just briefly talk about what those two things are. Goodyear welted is a term whereby a shoe is created using the Goodyear welt construction, which is a small leather strip that attaches to the insole and the upper prior to putting the sole on in which you then attach the welt to the sole. Now it's called Goodyear for the gentleman that invented it, who I believe is the same gentleman that did the tires. Uh, Charles Goodyear, I want to say. I studied this a long time ago. I've written about it, I'm sure. And the machine he created to make this happen. So by definition, a Goodyear welted product is made by machine. This ties into my previous video because any salesman, brand owner, whoever that has the words handmade next to their Goodyear welted shoes is by definition contradicting itself because Goodyear welted means the welt was sewn on by the Goodyear machine. Go figure. Hand welted, just like handmade, is very written right there in English. Welted by hand, hand welted. So hand welted is the same kind of, yeah, it's the same process, different materials done by hand. So no machine, welt is stitched to the upper and the insole by hand. Now the sole attaching to the welt is another story. That could be done by machine, that can be done by hand, that just depends on how the shoemakers choose to do it. So. <clears throat> For those of you that caught what I just said about different materials, this is where the huge argument comes into play. Because the argument is which is better. Now, bespoke shoemakers will argue to the day they die that hand welted shoes are better. Guys that own massive factories might say that's malarkey, Goodyear welted shoes can be just as good. Being that I've made shoes by hand, owned hand welted shoes, have a shoes factory, not have a shoe factory, have a brand that's made by a factory that does good your welted, I've been able to experience both worlds. Um, and, you know, I'm, everything that I do, I try to be as objective as possible. Granted, I'm human. I have my, my feelings, my emotions, my subjectivity, but when it comes to educating, I try to just be as, con as transparent and objective as possible. So, pretty sure I've written about this in the blog. I have more than 2,000 posts, so sometimes I forget what I've even written about. Um, okay, so it's like, which is better? That's just like saying, how long will my shoes last? There's no real right answer. There's not. Um, because better 
is a subjective term. How do you define better? Will one last longer than the other? Is one more comfortable? Is one better made? Is one uh, more durable uh, in other aspects? Is one more sleeker? Is one, you know, is one more elegant? Again, these are all ideas, subjective ones. There's no fact here. But I will break down objectively, I think, is one of the few arguments about this uh, in terms of what is better in longevity. So, the argument that the hand-welted enthusiasts and shoemakers will make is the canvas rib. I'll explain what the rib is in a second is the weak point in a Goodyear welted shoe that will inevitably break and thus deter you from resoling. Whereas they then claim that the hand welted shoe is uh, infinitely resolable. But I disagree with that idea and I'll explain why as well later. <clears throat> so the canvas rim, rib, and I'm sorry I don't have something to show you, but uh, there's, there's one on the wall there, but it's very difficult for me to have an unfinished shoe in my, in my shop. So when you turn a shoe over, right, forget this sole is here, and uh, you have the insole. So the insole is the leather that your foot is actually touching beneath your beneath your foot inside the shoe that's the insole that's the top of the insole and then the bottom of the insole is uh, attached to the bottom of the last so in a Goodyear welted shoe they put what's called a canvas rib now the canvas rib is like a little strip of canvas that they cement down to the insole and the, the rib is like a little wall that sticks out. Uh, yeah, like a little wall. Like a, I don't even know how many millimeters. Tiny little wall. And this wall that sticks out. So <clears throat> you have the wall here. And then you have the welt that comes. And so this wall acts as the, 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 the it acts as the insole. But it's not. It's a separate piece that's canvas. So you stitch, then you last the leather, and then you stitch the, the uh, welt, leather, and the canvas wall together to create one bond, one hold. Uh, and you stitch it all around. Now, in a hand-welted shoe, you build the wall in the insole. Uh, and it's a lot thicker and arguably more durable. Um, so the argument is you build the, the, the wall and the insole. So now you're sticking the welt to the insole directly, no canvas rib, directly into the insole and the upper all together. So the argument is that the canvas rib, every time it's re welt, re, yeah, re welted, re good you're welted, the machine is just creating the holes, right? And pretty much eroding the wall, the rib. I'm going to use the word wall because I think it's just easy. To, I don't know, maybe it sounds, it, it makes more sense <laughs> in a layman's term. And so this machine just stitches and repunctures this canvas material. Now, after repuncturing so many times, you start to create holes that are just too big and you essentially break that wall. And once you break that wall, you do not, it doesn't hold anymore. It, you have created weak points in the shoe now. But the hand welted one, has holes that were created by alls and a person that is there redoing that every time. So the stitch is going right into an existing hole. It's not being repunched by a machine that doesn't know where it's going. It's somebody's guiding it right into that already pre-made hole 
and put it back in again. So when I said that I don't agree that you can resole them infinitely, any material breaks down. Leather breaks down, moisture gets in, all kinds of stuff gets in. Eventually, I do believe a hand welted shoes uh, wall, rib, feather, whatever you want to call it, can break down. Um, it's not 1000% foolproof. It, over time, it can. It can through erosion uh, of, of you know, the, the environment. You get water, water gets in there inevitably. These things, there's no such thing as last forever. Anyway, your upper will probably give out first, but either way, uh, I just think it's not accurate to say infinitely. Uh, more, for sure. So, now knowing that, that's the, that's the main argument right there. That's the, hey, I got you. We, we can do it way more times resoling, which means your shoes are gonna last longer. That means they're better. Of course, sure, if you value maximizing your shoe to the nth degree versus what you paid better, granted, you won that argument. But now, let's throw some real life situations into the mix because that's what real life is. It's not just fictitious ideas. So pound for pound, a hand welted shoe is most likely better by the means we tend to think as people when we invest in a product. Better if you're comparing one shoe to one shoe. Um, and I say that because yeah, if we're just going off resoling, right? How many times you can resole a shoe? If we did an experiment where one person for 20 years straight wore, sus, I already realized in my real life experiment it would be very difficult to create. But basically, if you were to wear a Goodyear welted shoe every day in all kinds of conditions without fail, no rest, and a hand welted shoe every day in the same conditions without fail, no rest, most likely your Goodyear welted shoe will not live as long as a hand welted one for those reasons that I mentioned prior about being able to get it resold. I have seen someone destroy. Now this was not with the first resold, but just destroy a Goodyear welted shoe in six months time. And this is from one of the top brands in the world. But that same gentleman only wore that shoe, walked 10 to 20 miles a day in every kind of weather condition you can think of, probably minus snow, and maybe even in snow. But that was in London, and London doesn't snow that often. So, had he had a hand welted shoe, would he have done the same? I bet, I bet, I really bet. But I'm sure he would have been able to resole that hand welted shoe more times than the said Goodyear welted one with the conditions that he put them through. Now, this is where the argument becomes muddy. So let's now talk about real life situations. Most people don't own one shoe, right? You have multiple. So the beauty of the Goodyear welted factory made shoe is that when you have up to five pairs and you have, let's just assume, you're a gentleman who works Monday through Friday and you switch your shoe every day so that you have one for one day, one for the next day, one for the blah, etc. You get what I'm saying. And on weekends you wear other things. So, <clears throat> now that your shoes have brakes and see daylight once a week, you are exponentially growing the lifespan of that product. So even if you subject it to a harsh weather day, you at least give it six more days to rest after that day. And those days matter, you know? It's weird, but shoes are like people. They need rest. If you wear them constantly without letting them dry properly, sit properly, gain their shape properly, again using shoe trees, so they break down faster because materials erode. But when you allow them to sit, dry, take form again, place the proper care on them, they last infinitely longer. So, 
when you start to say if a guy has five Goodyear welted shoes versus five hand welted shoes, I really don't think at this point the, the ability to go through those in general. First of all, I don't think anybody can calculate that lifespan because five pairs, I mean, you could easily pass that to your next generation. At a certain point, the Goodyear welted shoes don't wear out when you have that many. Um, it's when gentlemen wear them consistently without rotation that they break them down. So <clears throat> the more shoes you have, the less this argument actually means anything because I don't think I, I, I think past a certain amount of pairs, there's, th this doesn't make, there's no valid argument anymore because your ability to actually break down the products becomes less and less with each pair that's new. So in terms of what's better becomes irrelevant after a certain point. They are essentially the same. Let's just take a real drastic, crazy, uh, scenario I have probably 250 pairs of shoes I think I've resold two pairs in my life I think I only resold one because it needed it excuse me I've resold three and that's because I wore it too much back this was one of my first pairs when I first started the brand a pair that I loved it was the only pair I ever resold because it actually needed a resole. The other pairs I resold were because uh, I was testing a cobbler or uh, for example, I just resold my black Chelsea boots. They originally had a single leather sole, but I changed my model to have a double leather sole. And because I didn't want to buy a new sample and have a yet another black Chelsea boot because I already have two black leather Chelsea boots. I decided to just send the boots back to the factory and told them to put on a double leather sole, but my single leather sole was fine and I wore those a lot. My 200 pairs of 50 pairs of shoes could last 20 generations, I swear. Because at a certain point, you don't even wear shoes uh, to a degree. You know, you get, you get stuck in your rotation and you have some shoes that see the light of day once a year, if less. So when comparing these, if you're going for a longevity issue, as in value for money, the argument only really is valid, in my opinion, probably less than three or four pairs as a collection. If you're a, collector, if you're a shoe guy and you say, I'm just gonna have three pairs of shoes, I want the three best shoes in the world. Okay, sure, maybe you take three hand welted shoes. But if you're a guy that loves shoes and you're buying, do you have more than five in your collection? It doesn't matter if they're hand welted or good you're welted. The odds of you destroying that collection is irrelevant. I mean, do you care if you get another resole when you're 100 years old? I mean, let's, let's be honest, let's be real. The hand welted people always say it's better because yeah, it's it's more prestigious, it's cooler, it's nicer to say this is this was crafted by hand. It sounds good. Doesn't make it truly better. Outside of three pairs, I don't think it does. I uh, <clears throat> I love the idea of hand welted shoes, but I would never take one over another. I mean, where I hold my uh, passion and criteria for what's better is fit and design so it doesn't matter hand welted crappy fit ugly design crap shoe good you're welted great fit great design amazing shoe so and vice versa don't get me wrong I'm not a proponent of either one I make good you're welted shoes but I love hand welted shoes too in fact I want to do a hand welted line in my brand so don't think that I'm here advocating one over the other, just trying to be objective because this debate, in my opinion, is silly. I think you have your hand welted shoes for the people that appreciate craftsmanship and want to say, oh, this is hand welted, hand made to a degree, even though not fully potentially. And then you have your good, your welted shoes for just shoe enthusiasts. They want to buy multiple. They don't care if it's handmade, this, that, that. They want it to look good, feel good, you know? There's nothing wrong with either one. Two different things that serve two different purposes. 
But in reality, there's no one that's better than the other. There is one thing that is achievable in a hand welted shoe that you don't see in a Goodyear welted one, and that is a leather arch stiffener, extended. Whether that's better or not is not for anybody to say. Some people find that incredibly uncomfortable. Some people say it's great, it supports my foot. There's really no better. I can tell you the shoe's way stiffer because of that thing. It takes longer to break in. Definitely you feel supported, but it, it can tire your arch out as well. So again, there are differences. Comparing one-on-one, -on -one, the hand welted will last longer. Does that make it better? Who knows? And, you know, again, what do you hold dear? I hold fit and design dear. I like shoes that fit well and look good, design-wise. I mean, they could be Blake for that matter. The only problem is I just don't find Blake that comfortable for my feet. That doesn't mean I don't actually like Blake's shoes. I don't like the ones that you can't really see the profile of the sole. I like a sole to be slightly sticking out and a little bit robust because that's what I like aesthetically. But I don't support or wear Blake shoes because they don't feel good for me. And yeah, you can't resole them as easily. So for me, their value is less than a welted shoe. <clears throat> so again, if you came here for me to tell you that one is obviously better than the other, sorry, but that's not gonna happen. I'm always gonna be giving you the raw, real truth as unbiased and objective as I can because, you know, I think this is the problem with the world. We're so quick to tell our truths to other as if it's the truth. And <laughs> that's not real. <clears throat> we all have opinions. Most of those opinions are not facts. And, uh, you know, so I'm just gonna try to give you the facts of the matter, like the differences in material, what those differences can mean, but also the real world scenarios in which it's a fantasy if you actually think you're comparing these differences in a drastic way to actually say, here's the reigning champ. No, oh. because <clears throat> most people don't just wear one shoe day in and day out. Most people have at least two. If you're watching this video, chances are you have more than five. For you, it doesn't really matter which one you get. They're both gonna last you beyond times that you'll even be wearing good your welted shoes. So, <clears throat> man, it's weird. I do these videos and I don't know if I've been talking 10 minutes or 30 minutes. Uh, I should start looking at my watch, looking like it's around 20 minutes. 20 minutes feels like a good time. Uh, I'm just trying to think if I've left anything out. Yes, okay. There's one thing. There's one thing I will say that I prefer in majority of hand welted shoes. Now, this is not to say all hand welted shoes come with this feature, <coughs> but this feature I do feel is better. Let me drink a coffee and I'll tell you. Now, uh, granted, again, this cannot go into the argument because this is not a fact that every hand welted does this. But I do find hand well, uh, hand lasting to be far superior than machine lasting. Um, now, like any argument that comes with its holes in that statement, because a great machine laster, somebody who knows how to work that lasting machine, can do a good job. And somebody who is a novice hand laster may not do as good of a job as a great <laughs> machine laster, but a great hand laster is unparalleled. <clears throat> to get that leather to form over that last flawlessly and maintain its shape over that last is in my opinion what creates beautiful shoes. When your vamp has excess air in it, it's not attractive. It's not sitting on the last the way it should be. Now, when the facing, the facing is the area with the laces, connects to the vamp, and there's no Oxford seam, 
or derby style, that is much harder to last. There's a lot of tension in that leather. And in order to last it properly, it takes skill. And that <clears throat> is where I find hand welted shoes superior to Goodyear welted, assuming that the hand welted shoe is also hand lasted. That I will say hands down is better, assuming the hand laster is good. Because that plays now into my idea of what I find to be valuable in a shoe and that is elegance and design and part of that is how well that leather sits on that last and maintains that form it's often what we see is different when people are like why should i pay two thousand pair of shoes you don't have to you can buy a three four hundred dollar shoe it's definitely not going to be sitting on that last the way the two thousand dollar shoe is i can tell you that for sure because that's what one thing you pay for. It's one difference. <clears throat> so for me, that is a superior notion. But that's not to say, you know, technically a Goodyear welted shoe could be hand lasted, but most Goodyear welted companies are not going to be hand lasted. It's just silly. You don't, uh, <coughs> it's rare you hand last. A lot of them will last the waist in by hand, but lasting the forefoot. You know, if you're doing good, you're welted processing, you're, you're really doing most of the process with machines. So, yes, good, you're welted versus hand welted. I'd say, okay, in a pound for pound boxing match, hand welted wins one on one. In a I have more than five shoes match, there's no winner. I really don't think there's a winner. Again, I care about hand lasting because I think it produces something more beautiful. Does that make the shoe better? No. Better subjective. Does the guy next to me care about that? If he doesn't, there's no winner. If he doesn't value, if he doesn't care that the leather sitting on the vamp as tight as it can be, which I'm sure many people don't care about, but me being a designer, I care about those things. So... <clears throat> I hope this answers all your questions. Again, it's funny we have these debates you know, because these are all, in my opinion, frivolous things in the long run. If you like shoes, just buy them. You know what I mean? <clears throat> as long as they're of good quality and good value for money, you don't need to have the best value for money and the best quality in the world. That's, I mean, that's just, those are extremes. Buy what you enjoy, buy what looks good, buy what feels good. Is it a $400 Goodyear welted shoe or a $400 hand welted shoe? Who cares? If it looks good, feels good, it could be either one of those, it could be Blake, it could be whatever. As long as the company has integrity, the shoes have decent materials, <clears throat> they have good customer service, they feel good, they look good, that's what matters at the end of the day. You know. Counting the stitches to the inch on the welt and comparing hand welting versus Goodyear welting all day long, inconsequential to happiness in your footwear. Happiness in your footwear is just enjoying what you wear and feeling good in it, and that's it. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this show. I'll leave it at that. Please, as always, every episode, if you have ideas, leave them. I will do my best to get to all of them and continue educating, discussing, telling my supposed objective ideas on the subject at hand although i am human i will always try to give you my ideas but tell you that they are not fact they are just my ideas thank you for tuning in please do share please do subscribe and please do have a great day thank you bye bye